Hi, and welcome to this review of WRC 8. Um, so, I got the download of this with the full edition um, last night, and I've put in quite a few hours so far, and I just wanted to give you an initial um, thoughts on it. So, I pretty much played the WRC series since inception, and particularly since um, the current developers have had it way back in WRC 5, and each year they've managed to improve things. Um, but there's been a two-year gap. Uh, they did w, uh, sorry, V Rally 4 last year rather than the WRC title, and I have to say that gap has been well worthwhile. Um, what we now have is a huge game. Um, there's a huge amount of stuff in here from training session centers. As you can see here, um, there is a absolutely massive um, test arena that you can go around. And I do mean it is absolutely massive. Um, you've got the full range of WRC venues in there. You've got the ability to run a career with um, a full-blown team management options on it you've got the ability to run a season so that you can do a full season without the team management if you want so you've got both options in there um, the team management should you take it up is colossal it's got massive skill trees on there that's in keeping with the likes of um, Codemasters F1 series so there's an awful lot to do in there um, things like the manufacturer relationships, team morale, etc. that have been in the past releases actually have some meaning and bearing now with the skill trees and the progressions through it. Um, in terms of progression, uh, as well as the normal um, WRC Junior or Junior WRC, uh, you've got the WRC2, WRC2 Pro and the full-blown WRC with all the licensed teams and cars from all of those. And you've now also got um, historic events that pop up and you can race these as one-offs um, or these pop up in the career mode um, as well as the training sessions. Um, so if you're using the full-blown career you actually have to manage your time in between the rally events now as well with things like rest days, um, putting in place uh, training sessions, um, running historic rallies if you're invited to them, etc. And all of these build towards your experience and pop up your skills trees. Um, weather plays a massive part in it now, a really fundamental part. Um, it's got dynamic weather within the stages, which can and does change across the stages. Uh, you, one of your team now is a meteorologist, um, and you use the meteorologist to gain advanced weather forecasts and take a chance on whether you think it's actually going to rain on the stage or not, um, and equip the appropriate tyres. Um, the tyres do make a difference if you're running rain tyres on a dry stage, they can wear quicker, you don't have the same level of grip, um, and it is you know, it is a genuine gamble. You know, two stages left in the day after service, do you go for the rain tyres, do you go for the um, dry tyres if it might rain on the final stage, you know, do you take the risk of the hit? And even if it says it's going to rain, it's actually no guarantee it's going to happen. So it's quite intriguing. You've also got a huge amount of statistics at the end of a rally to work out your parts wear and tear, tyre choice, times per sector, all of this kind of thing um, in comparison to all of the other competitors. So there's a huge amount of depth in the career mode now, and it really is good to see. Um, and it's finally come to fruition after so many iterations of the WRC series with the current developers. Um, and then we get down to the nitty gritty, uh, what the cars are actually like to drive. Uh, and the short answer is, they're excellent. The force feedback is really good. self aligned torque can be felt through the wheel really clearly and really well, particularly in front wheel drive cars as you'd expect it to. Um, You've got some really good force feedback options in there. The weighting on the wheel is really good. The physics and the way the cars behave is exceptionally good. It's moved it on from WRC7 quite significantly. It's a really solid title. Um, and it 
it is in my view it's a sim now that is exactly what we've got now um, and I think that's a really good thing particularly for what is effectively a licensed title um, to have it as a sim uh, is really good the stage design once again is superb uh, really well detailed really good looking stages the vehicle models aren't quite as good as um, the likes of say the vehicle models in Dirt Rally 2 but the stage design more than makes up for that and the look and feel of the stages particularly with the range of times of day you've got on there and as I say the new dynamic weather really does add quite a lot to it and they haven't overdone the dynamic weather one of the things that really annoyed me with Dirt Rally 2 when it came out virtually every event was just hammering down with rain and you couldn't see a bloody thing here it's used far more intelligently and far more in keeping with the actual weather conditions you're likely to uh, find on the actual rallies themselves based on where they are geographically and the time of year that they occur. So it's really nice to see there's a lot of thought been put into this title um, and as I say the handling, uh, the way the vehicles drive is exceptionally good it really is quite solid and I'm really pleasantly surprised by it. Um, I've not tried it with the controller, I've been using it with the T300, um, minimal tweaking, all I did really was drop the overall uh, force feedback effects, everything else I've left as it is, um, and it just plays really well. You've also got a wider range of damage right the way up to realistic, and there's effectively now, if you want to in Korea, a permadeath mode, which basically means you get no retries whatsoever. So if you absolutely stuff it and destroy your car, particularly, and it is possible to do that with the damage set on realistic, that's it, rally over. So um, with these kind of things in place, I think, uh, you know, Dirt Rally may have lost its... Um, Monica as the uh, Dark Souls of Rally titles because if you switch all of these options on that's exactly what you've got here it's seriously hardcore in that regard um, it, and it's just a lot of fun to play it's really well put together it's really well thought out there's a colossal number of stages in there from the actual events through to these training locations and the test locations um, there's a huge amount of vehicles in there, particularly for a licensed series title, which can be a little thin on the ground. Um, the handling's excellent, it more than looks good enough. Um, being perfectly honest, it's a title that I, even after a short amount of time, would strongly recommend. If you are interested in a rally title, this one really is well worth picking up and well worth having a look at. Um, I've had a soft spot for the WRC series, even the really iffy original WRC 5 from this development team. You know, they only had 8 months to put that together and it was flawed, but showed ambition. And they've increased that, showing that ambition and what they're capable of with each title. And uh, WRC 7 really did pleasantly surprise, well WRC 8 in my view. Um, they've hit what they aim to do it's a really strong title um, and one of the most enjoyable rally titles on the PS4 at the present moment in my particular uh, uh, personal opinion um, it doesn't quite have the handling prowess of the likes of um, Sepple Rally Evo um, but for my money the handling is on par with Dirt Rally 2 and uh, the force feedback I personally think is better than Dirt Rally 2's and it's got an awful lot going for it. So yep, that's my view on uh, what we get with um, WRC 8. Uh, I might change my mind after I've played it some more but I really don't think I will. But let me know what you think of it down in the comments below but personally I think it's a very strongly recommendable title um, and I'm going to get a lot of time out of it just as I did with WRC 7. So hopefully you found this useful. Uh, if you have please do like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you all soon. Thanks very much.